Today's scripture reading will be taken from John 20, 24 through 30. John 20, 24 through 30. Now Thomas called the twin. One of the 12 was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciple therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your fingers here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Good morning. <clears throat> Surprisingly enough, I honestly thought there would just be a few people here, but uh, today, because I'd heard all the people was going to be out of town, and and um, but it's such a great crowd. It, it truly is. And no, I didn't uh, put this lesson together to try to get you to watch the last Indiana Jones movie, but it just coincided with it. Um, I think this was off the last crusade. I was just thinking about this and, and, um, uh, him taking a step of faith or a leap of faith. And, and I kind of thought to myself when, um, and thank you, Colby, for reading that scripture. How we are when we put ourselves out there and we know that faith may be an issue in our life. When I'm thinking about putting things together in a lesson, what has wavered me in my faith? I think everybody at, at some given time, maybe sometime in their life, has, has kind of come into this issue with, man, I'm not as strong as I need to be. I'm not as faithful as I used to be. And I think about this too, and, and I think Wesley used that a couple of weeks back, didn't you? Maybe not with you, but um, talk about this meter of, of where I am at this stage of my life and how much I have. Because I know for some people, Maybe it's it kind of teeters in the in the maybe the the quarter tank or the half a tank. You're not full of faith. You're just getting by. You're not truly convinced because the idea and the concept of belief is this trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something, an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists. So I've asked myself this question. Maybe you have you. What do I truly believe? What do I take out of the scriptures and how much do I rely on? What do I take out of members and how much do I rely on them? What do I rely on God? What's the final outlook? And am I truly convinced that at the end of the day, what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing? You ever question the doctor's prescription? You ever get a tablet and you got six things wrong with you after you took it? Or is that just me? I took a tablet. I, I don't even know what it was. I just tell you, I took it and I went out and I got a sunburn within 25 seconds, if that makes sense. And, that, and I, I started reading the fine print that says, don't go in the sun. And then you're just like, well, maybe I shouldn't have took that. And I think we start, we start then when I had, when that happened to me, and I think this happens to some people, when things happen to them in their life, they start to question those in authority. How about the technician on the phone for the new item you bought that doesn't work? You ever had that? You call somebody up, repair a man. He has no idea what he's doing. Or maybe you think he doesn't because it still doesn't work or maybe it doesn't suit you as much as you thought it should. Or you can just name it, a teacher, a coach, a parent, colleague, or even God of things that's happened to you in your life, and you start, to, you start to basically just waver in your ideas of what my faith is. 
in that person or that individual because it comes back to this trust, faith, or confidence in someone. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is a substance of what? Of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we've read that verse and verse and, I mean, over and over and over again. But if you think about this, how many of you, of you sitting here today, you only believe it if you see it? How many of you live by this verse? That you truly have faith? Or do you have it because you see it? That's a question to ask yourself. Because are you truly living by this verse? If we question everything until we see it. When we don't abide by this and we kind of get in this category, we can create doubt and unbelief by many different factors that weigh on us. And we lose focus of what, of what, of, of the, what words God, the explanation of why we think these thoughts. And then I ask myself, I mean, when I start to question everything, it's just like, where did they go? Why aren't they here? Why don't they believe? Uh, why don't I believe our questions that are frequently visit our mind? Because many of you probably have lost members, families that don't go to services anymore. Many of you probably have no people that are unfaithful. So you start to doubt and question. So the goal of this lesson today is, is to try to get your faith built up. Because we need to determine what the root cause of all this is. So I want to show you some factors. And these are just things that I've doubted. And maybe, maybe you're okay with it. Maybe you're just a stronghold, you're an anchor, and that is great. But for me, this might have caused me not to come back to services or speak to a brother, or speak to members about cert uh, certain situations. One of these comes up is the doctor. I think many of us have questioned doctors. Raise your hand if you have questioned the doctor. How many's had a second opinion? Raise your hand higher. I want to see how many's had second opinions. Wow. Okay. I don't feel as bad if I do now. But a lot of us, I think, we, we start to we, we start to look at this and we wonder that because I feel like the scriptures for me is my doctor. I go to that when I have issues and I have error and I have difficulties in my life fixing. So I'll turn to the scriptures to help me get through those situations. But some question the scriptures. Why do you question? Them? What I've noticed myself, and, and I think what most of you have seen, you question because there's a lot of opportunities out there to get familiar with different things. Search engines. You can just look it up. Different thoughts, bad experience. You know, when I go to the doctor now, I know more than he does before he prescribes my medicine to me. Did you know that? Have you ever noticed that? I went in and I know the seven different medications he's going to give to me, and I know the side effects of every one of them. Wait a second, why aren't you giving this? And I, I'm to point at you. I'm going to look at me like, okay, I, they're checked out. They don't want to hear anything I have to say because I don't believe in them. And this could happen to us when we look at the scriptures. So I want you to look at this story. Very familiar with you. 2 Kings 5, 19 through 14. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you. You shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, indeed. I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are you not Abana and, and Farpar? the rivers of Damascus, better than all the rivers of Israel? Could I have not washed them and be clean? So he turned and went away in the rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you have not done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and he dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the man of God and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. 
and he was clean. Did he believe? Did he question it? Was it too simple? And I feel like sometimes we want something elaborate. Oh, God must have meant this in the scriptures. Because this, this is just too simple. This is just too cut and dry. For him, it was cut and dry. I got all these other rivers. I can just do it there. Well, he told you to do this. And this is what it says. This could, could cause us to lose faith. When we question scriptures, are we questioning God? So now what I've done and what maybe you've done, when you question it, what are you questioning? What purpose of the scripture are you questioning? That's what you have to ask yourself. Is, is whatever I'm going, to, I'm going to say about it and what I'm going to try to convince somebody, is it something that I think on judgment day will help them get to heaven? That's what I ask myself now. I think they mean this because that doesn't apply to us in this age. Have you ever heard anybody say that? That was written thousands of years ago, Ty. I don't relate to us anymore. Well, to me, if that doesn't relate, then what other parts of the scriptures don't relate? You're going to start segregating and picking and choosing? Because every time you do that, your faith starts to just, well, maybe this isn't right. Well, maybe that isn't right. And I ask myself, where does it end then? Where does it end? We need to be careful. We should suggest this thought. As in James 1 and 14 says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by who? Their desires? No, your own desires and enticed. So another person or personnel that I've questioned and don't have any faith with was the counselor. And I feel like sometimes this kind of goes along the counselor or members, people you can go talk to about situations and help you through difficult times. But some of you may have had this in the past where it's a guidance counselor or a marriage counselor or something, buddy, that you went to. And you know what? They just didn't get me where I needed to go. So why did I question them? They didn't help me get out of my situation because we didn't have, uh, I just didn't feel like me and the, the, the counselor were on the same page. We didn't really strive to, to it, we were, that person, they're incompetent. They don't know what they're talking about. Or they're very hands-off. But usually what it is is not what I wanted to hear. I remember the, going over to OU, and this person's like, you need this, this, and this left. I'm like, are you kidding me? Why didn't you tell me that four years ago? I would have changed my major. Has that ever happened to you? Like, you, like all of a sudden, these, these classes just popped out of nowhere? I'm like, what are you doing in your job? And you feel like they're not trustworthy, right? You lose faith in, the, in their ability to guide you. And I feel like this is something that could happen to us. But it did, it did happen to this guy. Second Chronicles 10, 6 through 8 says, And then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father, Solomon, while he still lived, saying, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you are kind to these people and please them and speak good words to them, they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted to the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him, and he said to them, what advice do you give? How should you answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Well, this is their comment. And verse 11 says, and now whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with your whips, but I will chastise you the scourges. Wasn't what he wanted to hear, was it? And I tell you what, I've had members say something to me that I didn't want to hear. But the reality was, I was in sin. And they were pointing out an error and a fault to me. And that's the advice and guidance that some people will give you, but you'll lose faith because you'll feel like they're attacking you. 
It's a personal vendetta. So you asked, if brothers and sisters aren't here to help you and guide you, what are they here for? You think they're here, what, what are we here for? So you have to, you question yourself. What am I gaining from it? What faith do I have in Carl or Gary? Okay? What faith do I have in Nathan or Cohen or anybody if I don't want to hear any advice from them? Reality is, if you don't work with members and try to build your faith, you only get what? You only get out what you put in. We don't utilize each other and, and have each other grow and stronger in faith, then we're missing the big picture here. Because we are to exhort one another, build up, edify, encourage. Some of these things, visiting the sick, teaching, attending gospel meetings, supporting church gatherings, do you think that's going to build my faith, Dan? What do you think? You think those things would help me? Do you think they're worthwhile? Useful? I went to a get together yesterday with a group, church members. You know what? When I left there, I was encouraged. It actually honestly changed my outlook on the day. Because right after that, my dog got hit by a skunk two times in the face. So it wavered my faith in that dog not knowing what he was doing when he come up on that thing. So a lot of things, when you happen, I've asked this, do you think these activities will bring you closer to God and build your faith in the members if you're around them more? What do you guys think? I think it's something that we have to challenge ourselves with. And I think it's something we have to do, not that we maybe should do, it's a have to. All right, the captains. Anybody ever lose faith in the captain? Ever been, been on a plane? It was one of the roughest rides I've ever been in our life. You guys don't fly enough then. I've been, on, I've been on enough of them to know. The last one I was on, I was telling you, we was on the way over to uh, Boston. And I never liked that trip because I've made it multiple times. And as soon as we got right, was it Adirondacks? What's, what's that mountain range there? New York, just kind of hovered over there. There was a guy who had a coffee. But this only held like 12 or 14 people. And he grabbed, he got that coffee poured. We dropped about 200 feet at an air pocket. The coffee was on the ceiling and he was just looking at me and I was like, I ain't taking any coffee. I'll just, I'll just grab some water for this trip. And I thought to myself, after that, you know, the first thing I did was, I looked to see the age of that captain on that. I wanted to see what he looked like because I was hoping he was this role model with a beard, white beard, and, and what I thought would be, he's the most, I have most faith in some guy like that. And I think about that myself. I will look in disposition people and have faith in them off of what they look like. And I did. I questioned based off of age or if it was a rough ride. Or they were always keeping me in check as, as what a team captain would do. These are some things I feel like would make us start to doubt our faith and who's in charge. Does anybody else look at that person? You ever get on a ship and you look to see who's, who's running the show? Because we should be challenged by that because there's a thing here. This is what this whole lesson was about. In Numbers 20 and 7 and 12, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. And Moses took the rod but from before the Lord and commanded them, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch your water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beast also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because, this is key, because what? You believe me not. 
to sanctify me and the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you, ye shall not bring the congregation into the land which I had given him, them. There was a situation where he, he wasn't what? Full of faith. And he didn't believe. And look what the effect was from him. This guy led these people. He did everything for them. He did all that he was supposed to do. But what happened? God told me he didn't believe. Why do you question authority? Why do we question authority? Is it because we don't want to hear what they have to say? Do you lose faith in the eldership because they just don't do what you think they should do? And what I found out now, this is the only reason I've, I've found this out so later in life, is that I'm a pro, running a program now. I'm in charge of it. And what I never took into effect and account for was all the variables that make a decision happen. I didn't. Now I got to think about junior high. I got to think about JV. I got to think about parents. I got to think about, about my coaches. All these decisions now come to this conclusion for me. And when you question the elders, do you know exactly the whole story every time? Because you know what? Do you think they're just getting your advice or you think there's uh, six other people giving advice? Because what you'll do is you'll start to lose faith in them because they didn't do what you thought they should do. Listen to me. This sounds simple, but it could be a huge problem. Even for me, things have happened and I would just, I would second guess it. And I'm just like, wait a second. It's not right for me to do things like that. And that's why, like I said, before we jump to conclusions a lot of times and lose faith in the eldership, we should pray about it and try to make sure we know that what decision they make will be the best. Because in Hebrews 13 and 17, this is what separates us from the eldership. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. They're the only lo looking out for themselves, but they're also accountable for yours. So they have a huge variable in this. And I know multiple members in here have been elders at different times in their life. It's a huge responsibility, and it's something don't be taken lightly. So think about that. Last of all, the creator. Why do I question God? I think people I've heard of in the past, they, they've lost their ability to worship God and be, and be just uh, basically back on track because they just feel they can't make it. They're not good enough. They... Uh, the, their life hasn't went the way they wanted to go. They can't overcome sin. They don't understand the scriptures. They get frustrated. They feel distant with the members, and they doubt scriptures, which is a huge combination because it all funnels back to doubting God and believing in God. Because we're going to talk about these two people here, and you can kind of see how they wavered. And these are people that were actually with Jesus. Peter, Matthew 14, 20, 33, it says, and Peter answered and said unto, and answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He, so he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked in the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O ye of little faith, why do you doubt? And when he had got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were with him in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. 
Do you think you'd have lost your faith? How many scared of the water? Just me? Everybody raise your hand. I was always curious. I kind of feel so bad now. I feel like a lot of times this story is, how could Peter do that? I'm afraid to go through a mud puddle, let alone walk on the sea sometimes. And you're just like, how, how, you can understand this, how people waver. And then on Thomas, that we, uh, Colby mentioned that in, in uh, John 20, 24, uh, 25, it says, um, the disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he has said to them, unless I see his hands and print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails, I put my hand in his side, I would not believe. And I question sometimes everybody, is that what they're looking for before they'll believe in God? Are you looking for him to come here and sit here beside you before you come forward and get baptized or, or, or repent of your sins? It's been a long time since we see people be, uh, 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 going forward, isn't it? And you, you question yourself. You're just like, are they, are they just like, are they, you're hoping you're, you're handling everything on their own? Or do you believe the power of prayer is going to help you overcome that sin with the members behind you? John 20 and 29 says, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's an important thing to know. Because maybe you sit here today in a state of mind, you need to build back that relationship with God. So a couple things. Building back your faith. I want you to think about this. Identify your areas of unbelief. Why are they an issue? Why is it an issue? And how have I got to this state? of why I don't believe. Focus on eliminating ideas or events that lead to your weakness. If there's something that troubles you, don't allow it to come between you and God. Don't continue to pull that in your life because you realize every time I do this, I question or not whether I'm going to get stronger or weaker as a Christian. You need to identify it and focus on eliminating it. Pray for help, strength, guidance, and encouragement. A common theme for about anything that you do in life. But all those things will all only continue to progress you in your ability to gain more faith. Minimize outside influences, things that distract you. Hence, it's the devil. Majority of the time, it's who? It's the devil. He's trying to weaken your faith. Surround yourself with spiritual material. Uh, for me, it was, it was just basically functions. Um, whether that's gospel meetings, whether that's services, work, books, music, so, uh, things that you, you know that, that will just bring you closer to him. And not garbage and pollution and corruptness. Those are things that just hammer your faith. Be an example. Remove pride. Focus on other needs. Be content. Give all your trust to God. How many believe that statement? Do you think pride can, can affect your faith? Absolutely. Ask yourself today, do you want to build your faith back? Evaluate yourself right now. And do you think, you know what, I'm ready to go. Me and Vivian just talked about that. She's like, every time I see these gas uh, 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 fire on top of it, I remember him like the second coming, like a ball of fire. And I'm like, would I just be terrified? Or I'd be like, finally. I think that's something to ask yourself. But most of all, have a closer walk with Jesus. Study the scriptures out. Whether you need to go in the, the gospels every day, read his life, the parables that he taught, grow from him and know why you became a child of God or know why you haven't became a child of God and identify those areas of concern. Colossians 2, 6, 7 says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so who walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. 
continue to grow stronger and your faith will be tremendously encouraged. So one final thought, what is that? What is that? The only person should know what this is, is this guy here. You look at that, look, if you've seen the look on his face, he was just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. What did I get you into, Ty? It's one of those deals. So, when I was a kid, I don't know, he, he, he's, you're about eight years older, eight, nine years older. So I was an infant on this story. It had rained like a monsoon. And we went down to Captain Creek, and it's usually about two, two feet to one foot deep. And it just looked like we went down to the Colorado, Colorado River. Terry said, and Darren, it was like, we'll lead you and we're good. Well, I, I noticed when we hit the first, uh, what was it, like a, a, a five or six rapid, or four to five rapid, like a six foot drop. I'm like, this was not a good idea. I said, I should have not listened to my brothers. And, and I was not an Olympic swimmer by no means. So hence the reason I'm scared of the water. So you get that coming to the comment. But anyhow, I didn't know any better. I thought this looks like fun. Well, after two, two hours of, of struggle, of trying to keep, keep my head afloat, and we, uh, there was just multiple things we had. We had a fence through the middle of the, of the creek. We got halfway through and there was a guy who put a fence clear across it. And we had these rubber rafts. Like what rubber, there's plastic. <laughs> We're like it. But we made it. And I thought to myself, like, as a kid, I didn't know any better. And now, I'd never step foot in there. Because I've looked at all the negative things that could ever happen. And all these outside influences that have told me, Ty, you can't do this, this, and this. This is going to happen to you. And all these... And I feel like that's what happens with our faith as Christians. We start out, it's real strong. And then we hear different things. It starts to weaken and it gets weaker and weaker and things happen to us. We have trials and temptations and it gets weaker. And before long, we have just, whatever zeal we had, it just gone. And we're lost. But how do we gain that back? Well, I just give you multiple examples of how to gain that back. Because believe me, I'd have a hard time getting back in that raft because I would have no faith in it. It would never last because I could think of 100 things that could go wrong with it. But for us, the difference is God will take care of everything for us. And there's nothing to worry about. He is there to take care of it and handle the situation. But you have to be willing and have faith in him that the prayers of this congregation will help you in sin or help you get back on your feet. But most of all, if you've never become a child of God, you have to believe that Jesus Christ truly is the son of God and that you want to get to heaven because you, needed your, you need your name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you have that opportunity as we stand and sing.